What's up, guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today, we're looking at the Cavalan Solist Sherry Cask. Stick around. All right, so we're looking at a Cavalan today. I've got the Solist Sherry with me. Uh, this is one of four reviews of Cavalan Solis that I'll be doing. I plan on doing them all back to back. And then when those are all wrapped up, I want to do a video with all four together. And I'll be doing like a blind tasting or a blind shootout. So that's something to look forward to. Now, there are way more than four Solis expressions available. But the ones I'll be looking at on the channel, I guess we could call them like the basic four or the core four. They're certainly the four most widely available and affordable from the Solis range. There's loads of different casks out there. And they're all going to be more expensive than the ones I've got here. There's like brandy stuff, manzanilla stuff, even the Fino's more expensive. The four I've got here, it's going to be the Sherry, the Port, the Vino, and the Bourbon. Those are all the entry level ones. And by entry level, I mean not even slightly entry level priced, but the cheapest ones. Anyway, when I'm done with each of these individual reviews, I'm kind of looking forward to doing that blind tasting. It's going to be the first one I've ever done on the channel. And you know, blind tastings, they're always very humbling. They're always entertaining. They're really fun. Hopefully I kind of like fuck it up a little bit just because that's going to be a better video for you guys. It's going to be funnier for you guys. Uh, but yeah, we'll see if the scores and the rankings and the, the ideas that I put forward in the individual reviews carry any weight whatsoever. Anyway, back to this one. Uh, single cast, cast strength, Oloroso Sherry matured. The one I've got here happens to be just shy of six years old. Now, some of the really earlier ones were around, I think, three or four years old. Uh, I think the standard would be between five and eight years old. I'm sure there's some older stuff out there. I know there's like a virgin oak that made it to Canada. Uh, that one was like 14 years old. I've never seen one that old, but we definitely get a spectrum when it comes to ages with these things. Now, traditionally, this one has been my favorite from the Solus line, or I guess we should say the affordable Solus line. I haven't tried them all. I haven't tried a lot of the fancier ones, but yeah, affordable Solus. This one's usually my favorite, but let's also keep in mind it's a single cask offering. Anytime we have a single cask release, some are going to be better than others. You're not going to have total consistency there. But on the whole, I will say I've liked pretty much every Cavalan Solo Sherry I've had so far. So really, this is a pretty low risk buy. It's a pretty low risk review. I'm probably going to like this stuff. Uh, with that said, though, let's pretend it's still a mystery. Let's jump into our review, see what our whiskey is all about. And in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So the specs on these never disappoint. This specific single cast comes in at 56.3%. Of course, it's going to be non-chill filtered. Of course, it's going to be natural color. So our color is dark as cola, which is pretty common with these shared releases. I do like the Cavalan Solus bottles. I think they look great. I think they're kind of classy. I like the designs. I like the fonts. I like the colors. The only issue with this one in particular is that our stamped on information is almost impossible to read. I'll put a little picture up in the corner so you can see that. Uh, but beyond that, I absolutely love the look of this. So four and a half out of five. We do, of course, get all the information we need here. We have non-chill filtered. We have natural color. We have distillation date. We have bottling date. We have cast number. So all the info we need. No noise, no fluff. Great looking bottle. What else can you ask for? So I did add some water here. Let's try the nose. Huh. I mean, it's big sherry. It's loads of sherry in this, uh, but not like typical sherry, not generic sherry. This one is like uh, deep and dense. It's very dark. It's very layered. Cream, like heavy cream. Some really dark fruity notes in here, like um, berry jam, blackberry jam, like fruit concentrate. Cinnamon, uh, treacle, dark molasses. Uh, there's some grapiness in here. In fact, you know what it is? It's not grapiness. It's a brandy note. It kind of reminds me of an Armagnac, but like a high ABV, very dense Armagnac. Uh, we also have some leather in here. And that slightly like balsamic type note that I always love in these really dense sherried whiskeys. And now our palate. Mm. Thick, dense, dark, very mouth coating. Uh, we have a very goopy molasses, dark treacle, that kind of thing. Um, pipe tobacco figs, dates, 
cinnamon. We also have blackberry syrup, we have leather, we have oak, and this is an interesting one. I get uh, tree bark, which I often snack on. Uh, now this is not nearly as sweet as you might think. It's very heavy, it's very brooding, but it's not especially sweet. And our finish. Mmm. Mm. Uh, dense. Always dense, this one. Um, sherry barrel, like a musty, not dusty, like a musty sherry barrel. A little bit of a dank sherry barrel, even. Um, cherry cola. But cherry cola without the sweetness. Which I've never had and also does not exist. Jesus Christ, what even are tasting notes? We've also got rum raisin, we've got brandy. Just like this thick, semi-sweet, fruity booziness in here. Uh, it's really cool. We also have uh, some dark pipe tobacco, some dark grapes. It's a very long, very rounded finish. All right, so unsurprisingly, I do like this stuff. It's everything dark. Uh, I love the restrained sweetness in here. It's not a very sweet whiskey. You'd think it would be. Uh, I get a lot of like really dark molasses notes in here, which is to say like these almost burnt semi-bitter brown sugar notes. I get more of that than I get an outright sweetness. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's what I get here. Um, it's again, very big, very bold, very dense, and again, very dark. We have dark berries, blackberries, pipe tobacco, leather, oak, beautiful composition of this whiskey. Super dense stuff, it's almost brooding. Um, it's a typical warm weather or hot climate whiskey in the sense that it's one of those whiskeys that gets a lot of action out of its oak. It gets a lot of flavor and density and intensity in a very short amount of time. And that's why brands like Cavalan or Amroot or other warm weather whiskeys, they get praised for that. And I mean, rightly so. They make fantastic whiskeys. However, on the other side of things, there are people who are a little bit critical of these like new world whiskeys. They say that a lot of the more delicate or nuanced flavors in them are often overwhelmed by the more powerful, more intense side of things. I do think that's a valid criticism that does happen. Now, is that happening here? Well, maybe a little bit to a certain extent, but honestly, I couldn't care less. I love everything about this whiskey. Yes, our flavors are very forward. They're very upfront. Um, it's got a lot of complexity, but if you're specifically seeking out like nuance or delicacy, Fair play, this one might not be for you. You know, it's not a uh, Tamdu, it's not, um, I don't know, a Macallan, it's not a Bladnuck, it's not an older Glenlivet. It is a bolder, more in-your-face whiskey, so be prepared for that. Because really, this is a sherry bomb, and I kind of hesitate to call it that because it sounds a little bit loud, a little bit unrefined. This is definitely not loud, it's definitely not unrefined. So maybe we can put it this way. It's one of the most sophisticated sherry bombs you're ever likely to have. And I love every moment of it. It's a spectacular whiskey. I'm gonna score this one a 91. Uh, I even had this next to a couple of my other cast strength, big sherry heavy hitters. I tried it next to Edra Dower straight from the cask uh, and Glenlivet 13 cast strength Olorosa matured. Uh, of the three, this one was the most luxurious of the lot. Now it's not my favorite. My favorite is still gonna be the Glenlivet 13, which I have yet to review. I'm not sure if there's any interest in that because it's a Taiwan exclusive, but regardless, I love that one a little bit more. I would trade my firstborn child for a bottle of it. I don't have kids, uh, but no, this one is still a gorgeous whiskey. Clearly at 91, it's no slouch, total banger. But anytime you're talking about Cavalan Solis, of course the elephant in the room is gonna be the price. And listen, YouTube tells me where the vast majority of my audience is. It's gonna be in places like the US, the UK, Canada, Australia, Europe, basically the Western world. And I know that in the West, these are pretty expensive bottles. So of course we do have to talk about value. So this might be a bit of a humble brag, but here in Taiwan, bottles like this sell for just over 110 US or just over 85 pounds. Uh, they're certainly worth that. In this market, I think they're very reasonably priced, but I know that in the West, these are pretty expensive. They're often, around double or just shy of double that price. So of course we do have to ask ourselves, is it worth that much money? I would say yes. Now, of course that comes with an asterisk. It depends on your own budget and how much you're being charged. But generally speaking, I do think these whiskeys are worth a certain amount of money. I see them as very luxurious whiskeys. I don't drink them casually. These are sort of like special occasion sippers. Maybe you're having a moment, you know, like a contemplative moment, a celebratory moment, whatever it might be. But certainly it's not just like something you knock back. But you know, those kinds of whiskeys, you know, the kinds of whiskeys you savor, you take a moment with them. 
those are usually the kinds of whiskeys that I'm willing to spend a little bit more money on. Of course, that's going to depend a lot on you guys, your circumstances, how much you're being charged, etc. All of this is situational. Um, and you know, let's let's try and keep it reasonable. I hope you can find this for let's say under 200 US. Um, but yeah, is it worth some money? Yes, it is. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. That's always appreciated. And I do want to hear from you. Have you tried our Cavalan Solist Sherry here? If not, have you tried any of the other Cavalan Solus? What were your thoughts and was it worth the money? Let me know down below in the comments. Also in the comments, you can let me know what you want to see me review next and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye guys.